Okay, this is 10.3, parametric equations and calculus. Parametric form of the derivative theorem. If a smooth curve C is given by the equations x equal to f of t and y equal to g of t, then the slope of C at a point x, y is defined as this. dy dx um, is dy dt over dx dt, where dx dt cannot equal zero. And if you want to do the second derivative, you just take the derivative with respect to t of dy dt and take the derivative with respect to t of dx dt, and that'll give you your second derivative. Um, so example one says complete the table below for the given parametric equations and point. So they give us this value here. Well, in order for me to know what that x, y is, um, we're going to need this thing here. So, um, let's go ahead and do this. So, d, y, dt is the derivative of this with respect to t, which is 6. dx, dt is the derivative of this with respect to t, which is 9. So, dy, dx is going to be 6 over 9, which is reduced down to 2 thirds. So you can fill in that chart there. If I take the derivative of that, I'm going to get zero. So when it asks me for the slope, remember the slope comes from this. Now if this did not have just a constant, if there were t's here, I would have to plug in my t value to find the slope. But it was just a constant, so my slope is that exactly. For concavity, um, if I had taken the second derivative and this had t's in it, I would plug the t value in. If it were positive, I would have concave up. If it were negative, I would have concave down. But in this case, there is no concavity. There's none. And it has to do with the fact that this is a line. So there's no curve whatsoever. So it cannot be curving upward or curving downward because it's a straight line. So let's go ahead and move on to example two, which may have some curves. Um, so dy dx means I'm going to take the derivative of y with respect to t first. So the derivative of this is 2 cosine theta. Then the derivative of x with respect to time is the derivative here, which is negative 2 sine theta. And then if I want to find dy dx, we're going to take 2 cosine theta over negative 2 sine theta. Now that will simplify into negative cotangent theta. Now if I, that's what I'm going to plug in here, but if I want to know the slope, I would have to um, plug in the t value they gave me. Now if you're trying to do that in your calculator, remember cotangent is 1 over tangent. So you would have to type that in your calculator. So negative 1 divided by tangent of pi over 4, and I get negative 1. Now if I want to find, oops, I plugged that in the wrong spot. That would be the slope. If I want to find the second derivative, I have to take what I had for dy dx and find the second derivative. So I'm going to do d dt of the dy dx. And so then, um, and you can take either the top or the bottom, whether you want to take the derivative in terms of um, sines or cosines. So here we end up with the derivative with respect to t of negative cotangent theta. Now I keep saying t, but really I shouldn't be using t. I should be using theta because my parameter is in thetas, not t's. So all these little t's should actually be thetas. Otherwise it doesn't make any sense because I don't even have a variable t in this problem. Okay, 
So then now let's see the derivative of cotangent. Let me grab my paper. I believe it's cosecant, negative cosecant squared. So let's see the derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared. So we get negative, negative cosecant squared, which is just positive cosecant squared. And then now, if I want to find the concavity, we're going to plug in our value. Now remember, cosecant is just one over sine. So then let's see, we get one over sine of pi over four squared and we get two. So then this is positive, so this should be concave up. Okay, we got two, which meant it would be concave up. Now, we do have quite a few more. So we'll go ahead and continue with example four just because I think we have enough time. So this one, example three says, uh, find, the, find an equation of the tangent line at the point on the curve. So this one's a little bit different. We have to find the tangent line. So we do have to find the slope and then we have to use that slope to find the equation. Now they did give me these coordinates here, so it's not a T value, it's actually the coordinates for X and Y and I will need those when it comes to writing the equation. So first let's find dy dt. So dy dt is going to be 2t minus one. Then dx dt is going to be 2t. And so therefore dy dx will be 2t minus one over 2t. And then, um, we will plug in our value here. Now this one will be a little bit different because I need a t value in order to figure out what the slope is. But I wasn't given a t value. So I will have to go in and find that t value. So if x is four, then I have this equation. And if y is six, I have this equation. So let's see what we get here. If I take the square root, I get plus or minus two. Well, let's see which one of those will make this true. So if I plug in um, positive two, I have two squared minus two. Let me make sure that I wrote down the problem correctly. Yes, I did, okay. So then I would get four minus two, which is two, which is not equal to six. So it cannot be positive two. Now let's try if we plug in negative two. We get six equal to four plus two, which is six, okay. So that means the T value that we need to be using here is negative two. So when I go here to find my slope, I'm going to be plugging in negative 2 for t. So I get negative 4 minus 1 over negative 4, which is negative 5 over negative 4, or just positive 5 fourths. So if I want the equation of the tangent line, I have to do y minus my y value equal to m 5 fourths times x minus my x value. So that becomes y minus six equal to five fourths x minus five. And if I add six to both sides, I get five fourths x plus one. And that will be the equation of the tangent line. Okay, 
So example four says find all critical points, if any, sometimes you may not have any, um, of horizontal and vertical tangency. Now remember, your lines, your tangent lines are horizontal when your slope is equal to zero. And they're vertical when your slope is undefined. Well, when does that happen? That happens when your numerator equals zero or when your denominator equals zero. Or, and in this case, since we have dy dx, this is your numerator is dy dt and your denominator is dx dt, okay? So we kind of already know how to find these vertical and horizontal um, tangency places. So let's go ahead and find this. Um, so dy dt is going to be the derivative, actually not t, right? In this case, we're using thetas. So d theta, negative sine theta, and here I have to use the product rule. So the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first, which is just a one. So I don't really need to write that derivative. These two will reduce, leaving me with just cosine theta, cosine theta. Dx d theta is, oh, that was dx d theta. So I just labeled it wrong, I did the wrong one. Now we can do dy d theta. So the derivative of sine is cosine minus, we gotta do the product rule here. So the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first, which is a one, so I don't need to put it there. So if I distribute that negative, I get cosine theta plus theta sine theta minus cosine theta, or just theta sine theta. So if I wanna find the horizontal tangencies, then I need to take my dy d theta equal to zero. So that means to take this equal to zero. Well, where does that happen? It happens when theta equals zero, that factor, and when sine theta equals zero. So theta equals zero, that's our one answer. And then here, if I look at the unit circle between zero and two pi, the y value is zero at zero pi and two pi. So those are my answers here. However, Notice that your theta has zero and two pi not included with the parentheses. If it were brackets, these would count. But since they're open parentheses, that means these do not count as far as our critical numbers, okay? So we just got one theta for the horizontal tangents and that is pi. Now, for the vertical tangency, we're gonna set dx d theta equal to zero. And in that case, that's theta cosine theta equal to zero, which means theta equals zero or cosine theta equals zero. Here we've got a value, but again, it's not in our interval, so it doesn't count. And here, this happens when your x value equals zero, which happens at pi over two and three pi over two. So your vertical tangencies are going to be at these two values. So you've got your vertical and your horizontal points. Now we'll go ahead and stop the video here. So that way we can continue the next problem on a separate recording.